Hi guys, this is Tushar here. Uh, today I will be taking you through a little partitioning exercise for Ubuntu. Now, there are quite a few partitioning schemes available out there and there is nothing as such set in stone. So, users can always choose a custom partitioning based on their needs or system resources available to them. Um, normally, users can get past by installing everything into a single partition. However, if you are looking for a little improvisation, then this is what you can do. One of the benefits of creating partition is the convenience while upgrading, repairing or reinstalling your operating system without affecting the user data or settings because you already kept your data and OS in separate partitions. Secondly, you may get some performance improvement for example by keeping your uh, boot partition in the beginning of the hard disk and keeping your swap partition in between the root and home and uh, other benefits could include that you know you mo you were able to make an informed decision or you were able to make choices about your potential usage of space so in this video i would be taking you through uh, a partitioning scheme which i personally use and is probably one of the most common approaches out there uh, this partitioning scheme is uh, particularly applicable if you are installing Ubuntu uh, as a standard desktop user and you don't intend to use it for uh, let's say a big development project or a enterprise application hosting or a server etc. Now before we begin here are some caveats. Um, this tutorial assumes that our machine has a standard or legacy BIOS firmware with MBR disks, uh, which means you do you are not doing this on a GPT disk, and in that case, I would recommend you to do some more research before you proceed. However, if if you have a GPT disk or a UEFI firmware, uh, even then, uh, this tutorial wouldn't change much. Um, it's just that you would have you would get one additional partition called EFI, um, but more or less the uh, the steps remain the same and it will still install um, secondly your um, we assume that you are you're, you are not using SSD disk because in case of a SSD disk um, you know the disk is is quite faster than the normal uh, rotating disk so so this partitioning scheme wouldn't hold much value if you if you are on a SSD disk and lastly uh, the assumption is that um, that we are doing this partitioning while installing Ubuntu so so the next steps um, assume that you you are in process of installing Ubuntu and you have already uh, come a couple of screens far from the installation and you land up on this page or window rather so the first option here uh, would wipe out everything from the disk which means if you got any partitions or data already on the system they would be gone and it will install everything into a single partition um, with, a, with, a, with a separate swap partition but since we since we want to um, do the partitions manually uh, we will choose the option called something else as you can see it says uh, you can create or resize partitions yourself so let's click continue now if this was a dual boot system or you previously had any other kind of installation on this on this uh, hard disk then uh, those partitions and data will show up here but in our case since this is a, a fresh hard disk with no other data uh, we see nothing yet. as you can see we have got around uh, 37 GB of hard disk available so let's start dividing it the best we can now before we start creating the partitions uh, let's take a look at what we are going to do so we are interested in in these four partitions the boot root swap and home um, the first one boot is is where the boot sector is written so it will it will host um, the boot loader the OS loader and all those uh, modules uh, which are required for uh, you know loading your operating system and this is probably the smallest of of all of all the four 
partitions that we are creating because it's mostly the static code and um, yeah there's really no, not much change or space required for this one um, the second one is uh, the root partition now this is where the OS files live and uh, depending upon your installation how heavy uh, or minimal installation you have got um, this will vary the size um, this a reasonable size would be around 10 to 12 GB um, for a standard user and um, the next one is swap uh, now swap is um, identical to or similar to uh, the Windows paging file so this is an area which acts, acts as an additional RAM uh, when you're running low on RAM and the last one is the home partition home is where you you know all your user data is stored um, so these are the four partitions which we are interested in so here we go click on the new partition table and it will give you a little warning that you have selected an entire device to partition and anything will be wiped off that's fine now we get our free space available to create partitions this is basically the entire hard disk um, on on top of which we'll create the partitions so let's create our first partition click on the plus sign and the first partition that we'll creating is the boot partition doing this will make the boot partition to sit in the very beginning of the disk which makes sense as uh, this is the first piece of code to be initialized when your system boots hence will give you a better performance so in terms of the size we will keep it uh, a reasonable say 512 MB is the reasonable amount of space um, which I would usually allocate to the boot so 512 MB type of new partition would be primary beginning of the space here and we will choose it's a very common practice to choose ext2 as a file system because it doesn't involve any journaling so we, we don't need any journaling for for the boot partition so it makes sense having ext2 as a file system for you know performance enhancements and etc etc and the mount and we will choose here mount point as boot let's recheck primary picking all good so here we go so we got our boot partition just at the beginning of the hard disk and that's the first partition 510 MB so as you can see we've got mount point boot format type size so the first partition is done next we'll be creating a, a root partition so click on the free space add button so depending upon the available space you've got in our case it's 37 I think I would give it a generous uh, 10 GB that should be sufficient in our case here so that would be 2 4 0 um, and this would be again primary beginning of the space and we can keep uh, ext4 as in as the journaling file system mount point would be root and here we go excellent so we have got the root partition as well now so let's move on the next one in our list is a uh, swap partition now a swap partition as you know as mentioned earlier this is just like a paging file in windows um, which acts as an additional RAM so um, as a thumb rule generally for swap partition um, as a general practice people keep around 1 to 1.5 times of the physical RAM installed so in, I, in my case here I've, I've got a 2 GB physical RAM for this machine so ideally I should be creating a swap partition for let's say either 2 GB or or 3 GB however there is no as such rule you can go higher if you wish if you if you plan to use uh, you know um, big applications gaming 
or any graphics softwares etc um, then you can and, and you expect to run low RAM you can you can increase your swap space so it's, it's entirely based on your potential usage of the machine so let's click on the free space in my case I will give it 4 GBs which is higher than 1.5 of the physical RAM but as mentioned you know you can make it anywhere pre between 2 GB 3 GB but I'm keeping it as 4 GB so that's 4 GB uh, we will select swap area we will make it primary as well beginning of the space and click OK so if so far we have got boot root swap and I think now we are left with the last one which is the home partition so again let's click on the free space add so the remaining all the space uh, can be given to the home partition because these are the four partitions we intended to create anyways and this home partition will host all the user data and personal data of the user so we'll leave the size whatever is there the entire remaining space uh, we will choose ext4 as a journaling file system and we will choose mount point as home beginning and I'm gonna create this as primary although you can do a logical one as well and bear in mind um, you can if you are on a BIOS firmware with the MBR disk uh, you can only have three primary and uh, one extended partition so if you create all the four primary partitions uh, then you can't create any more primary or extended partitions so there is a limit on the MBR disks um, so here we go I'll create it as primary There you go all done so with this last partition we, we come to the conclusion of this video um, however you can continue the installation further to complete it to the end uh, in fact if, if you need any further help on the further steps you can watch uh, my other video about Ubuntu installation so that's all guys thank you thanks for watching